Hey there folks, how you doing today? Hope all is going well for you. Welcome back to the channel. Please bear with any background noise that you may hear throughout this production. This will be video number three in our series on the Savage Axis Rifle. And today's video is brought to you by IMR4064, CCI Large Rifle Primers, 168 grain Sierra Match Kings, and the number 44.5. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, as some of you may remember, I took the rifle to the range a couple of weeks ago and we fired it before and after the M-Carbo trigger spring kit and the stock block kit for stiffening up the forend. And while I think the trigger spring kit was well worth the money, I'm hesitant to say that the stock blocks did that much. However, uh, I'll try to find the pictures and throw them up here. You will remember that we essentially cut the group size in half after making those modifications. The group that we achieved the best accuracy with at the range that day was with Hornady 150 grain non-typical white tail ammunition. We also got fairly reasonable groups with a hand load that I had developed for a different rifle. And I, I think I'd have to watch the other video to go back, but I think we were right at about an inch and a half with those groups. So I said to myself, self, let's tweak this hand load and see what we can do to make this rifle a real shooter. Now, before we went to the range, and I mentioned it to some of y'all before, that while this Vortex Diamondback scope that's on here, it's a 4x12x40, it is a very nice scope. I do not feel that it is ideal for a 308 rifle that we're building to see how much precision we can get out of. It lacks a parallax adjustment. It's a one inch tube, so it's not the brightest scope, but also at 12 power, it just doesn't quite magnify as much as I would like to see it for some of the long range stuff that I would like to be able to do with this rifle. I was going to solve that problem by installing the Vortex Diamondback HP scope that I had on the Alaskan 243 that we built last year. But the issue I ran into, and this is when you're dealing with a budget rifle like the Savage Axis, these are the kind of things that you'll find and to most people they really don't make a big difference and it can be overcome but it's something that you need to be aware of and that is that the Savage Axis, whether it be a long action cartridge or a short in, let me try that in English, whether it be a long action cartridge like a 30-06 or a short action cartridge like a 308, only has one action length and it's pretty much a long action action length. Where we ran into an issue was with this two-piece mount that is on the rifle, it was on the rifle when I got the rifle, it only has one set of slots, just one slot on either mount, and the distance between the two was too long for the center tube of that other scope. I could have easily corrected this if I had a one-piece mount with like a pick rail on it or just a two-piece mount with more options. I actually even entertained the idea of slotting this mount with another slot, but it's already mounted as close in as we could get it, so suffice it to say I could not put that scope on this rifle. That is okay. That scope found a home on the 30-06 ADL that I gave my boy for Christmas after he smashed the Bushnell banner that was on that last November when we were hunting. And unfortunately, I did not realize that the other scope would not fit on this rifle until I already had this one off of the rifle. So yes, that's right. I had to put the scope back on, get everything readjusted, and I had to re-zero the scope, albeit it wasn't very far off. So I'm going to have to figure out something else for a scope on this rifle. But I said all that to say this, bear in mind that the accuracy that we achieved on our last range visit was with a 12 power scope that does not have a parallax adjustment and is not particularly bright. In addition to working up a couple of different hand loads for this rifle, I also bought a box of Hornady's new Precision Hunter uh, ELDX bullet, it's 170, 178 grain. I'll double check and I'll put it down here, but I think it's 178 grain. I purchased a box of those at Academy the other day for $51. That's just over two and a half dollars a round. 
and I fired some of those through this too to see what it would do with a premium precision match grade hunting ammunition. And while at $51 a box I didn't shoot the entire box through it while we were out there, I did shoot enough to establish a baseline. So once we had the scope sighted in again, I set out a fresh target at 100 yards. Now you may notice down at the bottom on the target there, there's something that looks like a little red sticky and somebody's bound to ask what it's about. That was the one round that I fired through the rifle to make sure that the scope was still hitting pretty much to point of impact. I made a minor adjustment and then I shot my three shot group. So the first group that I shot with the first hand load, and we're not going to say what it was on here because the thought police will throw it down the memory hole. With a relatively cool barrel, remember I had fired one round through it a few minutes prior, grouped at right about 0.75 of one inch. I made another slight adjustment to the scope and fired another group that measured in at 0 0.80 of one inch. Those were the two best groups I was able to get on paper with a hand load. We also shot two other groups with that same ammunition that averaged just over one inch, so it's safe to say that that load is a good starting point. What I was disappointed with was the spread that I got out of the Hornady Precision Hunter with the ELDX bullet. It was about two and a quarter inches at 100 yards. There is a possibility that I messed up and that's why that happened, but it happened more than once. So I'm going to say that probably this rifle just really doesn't like that ammunition. At two and a half dollars a shot, I'm not going to waste any more of it through this rifle in its current configuration. I may try it again once we get the new stock on the rifle. So where is the new stock? Well, as of right now, Magpul still has not released them. I took this screenshot off of their website this afternoon. So getting back to where we were at in the last video with this rifle, some of you may remember that I put up a poll on the channel to see if you wanted to see this rifle Cerakoted or Durablued, and only three people voted on that, but everybody voted towards Cerakot. So at, at this time I am working on fabricating an oven large enough to accommodate this barreled action because it will not fit in the one that I normally use. So where are we at with the rifle now? It still pretty much looks like it did last time you saw it and that hopefully is going to change in the next couple of weeks. I was a little bit delayed on working on it because I had to build a swing set out in the backyard and then I had to get the retired OSHA inspector out there to test it and make sure everything was okay with it. And we all know how that went. In the very near future, the scope is going to come off once again. The barreled action is going to be Cerakoted, and hopefully by then we'll have a new stock to put it into. In the meantime, I'm going to put another poll over on the channel, and I want some recommendations from you people on what you think I should put as a new glass for this rifle. That's all the time I have for tonight, folks. I hope you enjoyed this. If you get a second to smash the like button down below, it really does help with the Al Gore rhythm. So until next time, take care. God bless.